Welcome to Desire to Learn training on grades. In this particular session will focus on the setup of the gradebook, which is a wonderful tool that is available to you in Desire to Learn. In order to begin the setup, click on the grades tool inside of the course in which you wish to create the gradebook. This brings up various options for you as you navigate bringing your gradebook into a virtual world. The grades tool is a very robust tool which can be linked to discussions, Dropbox, and quizzes. The first step in setting up your gradebook is to determine how you normally keep track of grades, what are the grade items, that you plan to use in the determination of the final grade calculation for the students. The first step in setting up the gradebook is to click on the setup wizard which will allow you to create the basic configuration for your gradebook. This should be based upon the format that you use for calculating grades. When you first click this wizard it will welcome you to this and it will display the current gradebook settings. Even if you have never used the gradebook, you will see information here as there are defaults that are set up. But to begin this, simply click on Start. And then this will walk you through various steps in the gradebook, which allows you to set this up to meet your needs first issue that you need to address is what grading system do you use. Do you use a weighted system where you assign a particular percentage to the various categories of grade items such as test, homework, etc. Or do you utilize a point system? And I'm going to walk you through a point system in this particular session. This is where each item counts a certain number of points towards the overall grade calculation. And they give you an example of this here. One thing you will also notice as you walk through D2L, anywhere you see a question mark, you can get help on specific items that are in there. And this gives you the information about how points work. Calculate the final grade by totaling the points that users receive on graded items. And then, of course, this would be divided by the total possible points the student could have earned in order to determine the final grade. Once you've made this decision, then click Next, which will take us to the next decision point in setting up our gradebook in Desire to Learn. In this case, it is how you wish to release the final grade. Do you wish the grade to be released to the student based upon whatever is calculated in the gradebook without you making any adjustments or editing any grade item scores. Most of you will probably prefer the second option, which allows you to uh, modify or adjust user grades, possibly for where students maybe did bonus work or had exceptional participation or are on that cusp between grades where possibly they end up with a 79.4 average, but they've really come on strong in the end, and you feel their grades should be adjusted to a B as opposed to a C. So I would encourage you to check the adjusted final grade option here. Once you make that decision, then you click Next again, which takes us to the third step in our process. This deals with how you're going to treat ungraded items as well as whether you want final grade updated. Ungraded items are exactly what they say, items that you have not yet graded. These could also be items that the student did not submit because obviously you cannot grade work that you has not yet been submitted. Uh, most instructors will choose to treat ungraded items as zero as these are required items in the course and these will show as zero until such time as you grade these. If the student never submits the item then it will also appear as a zero. I would also encourage you here to check the automatically keep final grade updated and this is merely a checkbox 
and this will update the grade so that the student can see their progress towards the grade that they wish to achieve as they move through the course. So this gives them better feedback than they would otherwise have. Then click Next once you are satisfied with your decisions there, which will then move us to step four in the process. What you will find here initially is only one grade scheme, which is the percentage scheme, which is the default. This is a standard grade scheme that most of you are accustomed to, which would show the percentage that has been achieved based on the points earned. For example, if a student earned 10 points out of 100 on an assignment, then it would reflect 10% as the grade here. You can create your own grade schemes as you wish and set those up, but we will talk about that in a later training session. So for now, we want to use the default scheme, which is the percentage. So once again, click Next. This will take us to step five in the process. Here deals with how you want things to appear in the view for the student and for the instructor. How many decimal places do you wish to calculate? The most decimal places that you can use is up to five. You can display as few as zero. I'm going to stick with the default here, but you can adjust this based upon how you want this to actually appear in your gradebook and based upon what you normally will do. Then I click Next again, which takes me to step six in my grade setup. This particular step deals with the submission view display options. Once a student has submitted work and it has been graded, then how do you want this to appear to them? Most of you will want to display the points grade so that it shows for them the number of points earned versus the number of points that could have been earned. The grade scheme symbol, the grade scheme color are items that you can set up and we will go over this in another lesson. Once again, we can determine how many decimal points we wish to display upon submission and you can adjust this as you wish. Uh, if you are using text-based items in your grading system where you give the students some feedback, this indicates the number of characters that would display in the gradebook for that option. Most of you will probably not utilize this, so I would encourage you to use this as the default. And then once again, do we want to display the final grade calculations to our users after submissions of any activities? And I suspect that you want to do that, so I would encourage you to check that option. Then once we click Next again, this will give us a summary of our grade book setup scheme. And this will show us here that this is a point summary. We will release the grades, treat ungraded items as zero, and all the information about the decisions that we've made. If you are happy with this, then click Finish. If there are items you want to change, then simply click the Back button. But we are satisfied with this, so we will click Finish. This will now establish our gradebook based upon the situations that we have created. This concludes the B2L Grades Setup Wizard session. Thank you for your attendance and we look forward to seeing you at other sessions related to grades.